I've got it reassembled, everything's been oiled, and it should slide freely like this. And I have uh, gone in here with a little screwdriver and I've brought these screws up just so you can feel that there's a little tension against them. Do that with all three of them. And if this fails to slide, you've got it too tight. And you need to do that over the full length of, of the stroke. Now it's just a little tight down that end, so I'm going to back this one off ever so slightly, like that. And I, I think I've got it just the way I like it. Now with the prop, this is rotating on me and uh, I'm trying to talk here and all of that. I'm going to make the final adjustment when it's on the lathe because then it is held firmly, almost like it's in a vise. And, uh, and then I can tighten these up and it'll be the way I want it to be. But that's what we want here. And if you would grab it like this, try to rotate it. There really is no play at all. That feels real nice. And this is really in good condition. I didn't have any bad uh, uh, surprises when I opened it up. Uh, sometimes with a real old lathe, you know, if it's 70 years old or something and it's come from a factory, you're going to find things in there that, that uh, you don't like. And you won't get replacement parts or they will be outrageously expensive. When you're working on a lathe, make sure you don't set anything directly on the bed. I've got a, a board here to protect that. When you're reassembling, cleanliness is next to godliness. So this has been uh, wiped and cleaned, and we're going to put a little oil on that and spread it around with clean hands. Well, they're not real clean, but there's no grit on my hands. Now when we put this compound back on here, these little uh, hardened uh, pins, go in. they have an angle on the end. They go in there like that. They have to go in in the correct orientation, but they will be in the, uh, uh, the bottom of the compound. They'll, I'll put them in here, one on each side, and then these uh, square-headed screws here push those hardened pins into here, and that's what locks this when you tighten them up, when you tighten these up. So I'm going to adjust these now, but before I do, just a point here that uh, when I go to put this back together, the brass nut simply goes in here, like that, and I will tighten the set screw right there with an Allen wrench. And then we can thread this into there and tighten those two screws into right here. Pull that off one more time. Now when we do the cross slide, which I'm not going to show you, but it is similar, this screw here holds the brass nut, I think it's brass, and once you have loosened that, this whole thing can, it should slide out this way. Then we can clean everything and the operation is going to be identical. Only we've got four screws here. Now let's talk about tightening these again one final time. I'm going to set that on there and get my wrenches and I'm going to just double check that with a wrench and a screwdriver here and uh, tighten those up so they just I got them where I want them if they don't move on me this is like uh, adjusting tappets if you remember some of you old timers adjusted tappets where you got a, uh, both a screw and a nut one working against the other and we'll do all three of those until this is just snug but not tight. Then I'm going to reassemble those other parts that I've uh, I just mentioned. I've reassembled uh, the compound and uh, I've got this adjusted, the Gibbs just adjusted just the way I like it. Not too tight not too loose. By the way, this is broken off. It was that way when I bought it. I think that would have had two knobs on there or a counterbalance knob like this uh, lower one. And it was a knuckle buster so I filed that off. You know a lot of these parts are die cast on a, a Craftsman lathe and that made them affordable. Rather than uh, machining them they just die cast some of the parts. Alright, uh, that's done. I wasn't really going to show you anymore, but I don't have that fastened down yet. I'm going to set that off to the side on the other bench behind me. 
and I'll show you how we take this off. There was a cover on here. I already have that off. And I've loosened up this screw. That's what a attach and I don't want those chips to go down there. Now I can uh, crank this all the way off, I believe. And we got some tight spots there. So these need adjusting bad. It's getting real tight as I come out there. So I'm going to back these off right now. Oh, that takes a different size. Those are a little bit bigger. And I don't have the wrench here. We'll back those all out just a little bit. Like that. Now it cranks real freely. and it will slide right off. There you can see the gib. Just came loose and the nut, there's the brass nut and that stub there goes up into there. That's, that's how that's uh, assembled. Quite dirty in there and uh, this is all going to come apart and be cleaned like what I did on the other side but I'm not going to show this because it's all repetition. You see how chips get in there on the screw? That all needs to be lubricated real good. Now I'm going to do another video like this on uh, the closing lathe here eventually because it's, uh, it's built just a little bit different and mine needs some attention anyway so I think I'll take the opportunity to do that. I hope this uh, helped you. If you're not interested in how to adjust the Gibbs, go on YouTube and watch a video of her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.